James, hello, it's Peter. Hello, Peter. This is James. How are you? Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> uh, where are you calling from? Uh, Salt Lake City. Uh, Salt Lake. Yeah, no, wh where are you at? You're, you're at a place called The Planet? Montreal Studios, yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. That, that, no, that, sorry. It's like, yeah, the Planet Studios, Montreal. Okay. I've been here now for a week, and I've just been, you know, making some pre-production ideas oh, before so we go in and rehearsal. Okay. On, uh, Sunday coming. Okay, so are you freezing to death out there? Pardon? No, are you freezing to death Not out there? Not at all, it's now warm. No, it's so snowing spring here. So it home. <laughs> well, that's good. So, uh, last time I talked to you, uh, you you were with Red Ant, uh, on the Red Ant label. Yes. Um, uh, what, what ever happened with that? I mean, well, that Red Ant, when I, um, during the Bauhaus, Resurrection tour. We were, um, we were, Love and Rockets, and I were on the Red Ant label. And then after the tour, I got as far as actually recording and booking studio time to start what was to be my next album back in 1999. And uh, that week. Red Ant went into bankruptcy, unfortunately. And yeah. So that that uh, left me in a position where I had to to negotiate my way legally. There, yes. there were legal ramifications, which were nothing to, to do with anybody personally uh, at that label, but it was just like a, a technical aspect where I had to, to the next, extract myself out of that. Yes. That... Uh, legal sort of bind and uh, then rather than sort of wait around waiting for wasting my uh, creative energy waiting around and, and uh, I left my manager to then look around for uh, uh, potential record labels whilst I went out on the road in, in the uh, 2000 it was, yeah, okay. on the Wild Birds tour, and then after which I did the Just For Love tour, and then I released my live album out of that, which I was very pleased to do, because it was kind of like, if I was going to release a live album, that was the kind of album I wanted. That was an amazing to. album. But what, oh, thank what, you. What, what exactly was most of that recorded at? That was recorded on uh, over t two nights, uh -huh. But most of the hour, actually almost all of it, is just like a, an uninterrupted recording of one of the nights at the El Rey Theatre in Los Angeles. Oh, okay. Okay, l listen to this album, Dust. Uh, I have to tell you something, that that's an amazing album. Thank You've you. done very good on that. Uh, it, it seemed like uh, Mark indeed had a lot of influence with you on that. Is that yes. Definitely, from a point of view of encouraging me to uh, to continue the the sort of uh, the space that I'd reached on the Just for Love album, where yes. where by the voice really did all the work. Okay. And so uh, Mayor Jam was very keen and excited to to really base the uh, the album the sound of the album really around the voice of Peter Murphy. Okay. And the you know, the lyrical intent and content. And so you'll you'll hear that you'll you'll probably notice that there is a great sort of a, a harmonious or organic relationship oh, yeah, yeah, with all, all all of the elements, you know. And so um yeah, Mayor Jam was very, very um, helpful in really focusing me on just, um, for instance, where, you know, we made a definite limit of time mm -hmm. that, that we set for the album to be made inside, okay. which was, I think it ended up being 10 weeks in total. And rather than I consciously wanted to, or, or Majan encouraged me to come in to the studio without any pre-written ideas. Yes. And uh, I eventually then spent 
the first week or so writing the album. Okay. With uh, vocals and lyrics. And from there on, well, well, Mayajan and I then really worked on some uh, chord arrangements, which would then work with the you know, the eventually planned Turkish instrumentation. Yes, gamings. yes. And it was that, that was a very simple framework around which we then continued and, and invited uh, various musicians and also Mayor Jam was uh, very, very um, clever in applying some sort of more electronica based rhythmic yes. elements in the songs, uh, such as use of breath, mm -hmm. finger bells, a lot of uh, interesting tickling sort of percussive elements. Okay. And uh, other than that, it was a very fluent, easy album okay. to make. So it flowed pretty well uh, uh, in, in creating the album. Would uh, you speak up, please? Uh, okay, so it flowed pretty well at, in creating that then. Um, you guys uh, flowed very well in actually putting, putting the album together. Well, what was interesting is that because I wanted definitely to to bring out more of the the particularly Turkish elements in, mm -hmm. in my music which I you know if you look back at all my albums there's always been a, a, an element of that of, yes. of that Turkish influence musically but not not as overtly as dust but this one had t before I made an album mm -hmm. that was uh, so overtly sort of uh, had a, a Turkish element in it. <clears throat> yes. I, it, it. I wanted to be sure that you know, the person I was going to work with was going to understand, one, what I was looking for as an artist and, and what the, okay. the nature of Peter Murphy was, as uh, rather than make uh, just another world album, which would have been sort of very, in a way, unauthentic. Okay. So, you know, the uh, the catch word was it had to be authentic. Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, you moved to Turkey, it was a while ago. Uh, how, long, how long ago was it when you actually moved there? We, we moved in 1992, just okay. after... Uh, the end of the Holy Smoke tour oh, okay. of North America. So that was August the 1st, 1992. Oh, okay. So we've been there basically 10 years, almost nine on 10 years now. Okay, well that is great. Yeah, I, I, I have to say it again, I have to com uh, com um, com um, congratulate you on this album. It's an amazing album. Thank you very much. Uh, well, well, I'm, I'm hoping that it's going to be, a, you know, an album that really sort of has a very sort of rich and beautiful effect with yes. people. I hope it you know, spreads that, that you know, sense of authenticity mm -hmm. comes across and there's a quality of love as as well as as well as um, you know very progressive and truly alternative music yes Okay, one thing, I, and this was a long time ago, it was about 1993, I was reading something in Billboard magazine, how you were trying to get away from being from the uh, the darker goth stuff into what you're uh, going into as of right now. I think that, that may have been a comment of the actual writer. <laughs> okay. But, I mean, sure. Um, no, I don't re really concern myself with actually identifying with with labels that yes. you may may or may not you know, project on to me i mean i i reserve the right to be peter murphy really and that's good you know and that's that's uh you know it doesn't really bother me but there yeah you know, there's an element where during Bauhaus we mm -hmm. definitely wanted to to make it to clarify uh and and by example, that uh, you know, our music was not really t t to be compared to to what might now be uh, understood as as gothic music. Yes, exactly. 
so that, that that was one of the possibly that was written around the Bauhaus resurrection tour period where that that was definitely one of the uh, on the agenda yes one of the main talking points on the, on the agenda yes okay uh, do, do you do do much with uh, do you ever see much with Daniel Ash or David J. much no, I don't, the last I heard from Danny was when he called me back um, when was it In, uh, just after the 2000 Wild Birds 2000 tour of okay. mine, and he he was uh, musing over the idea of you know, he was warming to the no he had warmed to the idea of uh, a, a a sort of more permanent uh, reunion of, mm -hmm. of Bauhaus, but then <coughs> that didn't happen in the end. So, you okay. know, I haven't heard from him since. But mm -hmm. David and I speak all the time, and you know, I count Daniel as one of my lifelong friends. Yes. So, uh, I mean, that that's in the nature of Daniel's nature. He likes to to cut off and break loose, and you don't hear from him again for a long while and then mm -hmm. you know, I'll probably hear f from him at some unexpected moment in time. Yeah. <laughs> okay, with, with uh, creating music, I mean, what keeps you going and what do you want to keep on doing or being in the music business? I mean, I, I understand that it's great to be uh, creative, uh, but it's also a crazy world be, being involved in this. I mean, I mean what, what seems to just keep you um, going from day to day and creating music? Yeah, I mean, that, that is always like the, the problem of any artist, I guess, is yeah. keeping that sense of motivation going and a sense of purity of purpose and clarity of mind. But, and, you know, I also like, like enjoy if uh, there's an audience, as I proved in the year 2000 with with the two tours that I, mm -hmm. I I made and embarked upon which was um, which was basically without any record label backing at all okay there, there, there was no record label there I one of the th things about that year was that it, it proved that uh, if you you have an audience mm -hmm. you have an audience you don't necessarily need the industry um, to, to achieve what you want to achieve. Yes. But there's a certain... I mean, people like Annie DiFranco have uh, survived and are uh, extremely successful without ever having uh, signed a record label. Okay. Deal. So it's kind of like, you know, that it's, um, it's that difficult balance of of uh, commerce versus art, you know. Well, yeah, it's... It, you know, it, it is difficult. Oh, yes, it is. It, that, it's that's it, part of life, isn't it? That is true. I mean, it's, it does seem to be easy to do that as of now with with the birth of the Internet and being able to pr produce things out on to online. You, yep. you can bypass the labels a lot of times. Yes, you can. Which but, is, you know, there, there is that monopoly that you, you have only when you have a sort of a very good infrastructure of like Mark.